So there are a lot of ways in Diablo 4 to start farming your legendaries and get everything you need. I just want to share the methods that I've used to get things together for my builds. Right now I'm working on a bleed whirlwind barbarian build that I got from maxroll.gg. Awesome website, has a lot of good builds on it, and I don't have a lot of time to make up my own optimal builds on the spot, so I use a lot of builds from there. But I have to farm up a lot of the legendaries that I need for that stuff. And I know some people will spam Nightmare Dungeons or they're constantly spamming Champion's Demise or the different types of dungeons that every single YouTuber is talking about and just showing on the fastest way to run this, fastest way to run that. I'm just going to get straight to the point. This is the method that I've used and it's worked out for me. And I feel that it's one of the best ways to get legendaries as fast as possible. And I'm just going to get right into it. So I do have a resource that I use and it is called HellTies.com right here. So as you can see, this is actually a new Barbarian, so a lot of this stuff isn't revealed on the map because my other one, rest in peace, just died recently. So I got this one back up to speed, and now we're farming for some of the legendaries that I need again. So that's the, the pain of playing a hardcore character, but you know I like playing hardcore, so it just is what it is. But regardless of that, this is the resource that I use, and this is the same health tide that we're looking at right here. So as you can see, these little orange circles are the activities. And then we have the mystery chest. Now, for me, the Helltides, the mystery chest are the only thing that are worth it. 175 cinders to open, so you need 350 to get both of them. If you do happen to get a Helltide that has the chest rotation, like the first 30 minutes, these two chests, and then it'll flip, and these two are open, sometimes you can get four, you can get up to six chests per Helltide, depending on the shifting of the chests, because some Helltides do have more mystery chests in them. But for this one, we have these two. So what I would do, is I would go into this Helltide, I'd get all of the events. I would constantly be chain running events till I have 350 senders, and then I would go and get and open both of the mystery chests. They usually drop for me between four to five legendary items, whether they be sacred or ancestral, depending on the world tier that you have, but it drops between usually four to five legendary. Sometimes I've had had chests that give me like one or two, which kind of sucks, but for the most part, four to five, it's a good chance to roll for an item that you may need or something for a future build. And you just keep running these events. You want to focus on these events. That's why I use this resource. It kind of shows me where the events are. And then once I get it down pat and I know the hell tide that I'm in, I kind of know where the events are and I just constantly run them. So the point of running those events, though, let me just get this off the screen, is the events give you obols and you want to spend those in town. So if we go to the city, we have up here the purveyor of curiosities, which I probably did not pronounce that correctly, but I don't care. And we're going to go over there right now. And I actually just got done buying some rings. So I bought two from him, so I don't have any on me. But what he does is you're essentially gambling these obols to get what you want. So it shows here if it's sacred or not. Sometimes it doesn't even matter because you just want the aspect. So what I was doing for my barbarian build is I was constantly rolling rings. So I would do hell tides. I would take all of the obols, which was usually when I'm done with the hell tide, I have like almost like 800 obols. If I'm running events just nonstop for the whole hour that it's active. And then I'll roll for rings. And I get like maybe like five to six legendary rings from all those obols that I spent, hopefully. And in my inventory, then I check them all. If it's the ring that I need, then I get that. And then I will focus on the next time I go around, I'll focus on like pants or something or whatever other thing I need for the build. Now, when the hell tides aren't up, because hell tides aren't always active, I'm running Whispering Tree. I'm constantly doing Whispering Tree tasks. I'm revealing the map. I'm doing all the different types of activities. I like to prioritize the events for the Whispering Tree, the same as I do the hell tide. So any of the events that are, well, that's a PVP zone. But any of the events like these ones, event, so they drop the obols as well. I prioritize those. I prioritize dungeons because they get five grim favor, helps you fill up the bar faster. Takes 10 grim favor to get the bar full. And this is the whispering tree. So I'll go here, they drop crates. You can pick between three different crates. If there is a gold one, I recommend grabbing it. But other than that, if it, for example, if I'm focusing on rings and there's a ring crate, I will grab that ring crate. And I have gotten the ring that I need sometimes while doing this so the and I keep talking about rings but I was doing like 20 hours of farming for rings switching between obols to whispering tree to hell tides and I finally got the ring that I needed which like reduces the cooldown of my shouts based on like enemies around me but I got it in city gambling on obols so now I know that the obols can drop it I've never seen a unique drop unique drop from this so if you guys have gotten one from him let me know in the comments because i haven't seen him drop any uniques i don't even know if he can drop them when you're gambling with obols but whispering tree hell tides and that and then i use that resource that i showed you so those are the three things that i've been doing it's been working really well for me and i enjoy doing it 
you know, throw some music on, just farm between the three, try to get those pieces for your whole set so that you can start spam running Night from Air Dungeons and get your glyphs upgraded and get your build ready for World Tier 4 and more of the in-game content. But that's essentially all I got. I just wanted to show you guys. I know there's a lot more optimal strategies and there's a lot of things that people are doing and they have a lot of data and stuff, but I just wanted to share the way that I do it and I actually get a lot of my legendaries that way just running between these three. So, you know, try it out. If it works for you, you might like farming that way. And then let me know in the comment if it's been working. So that's going to be it for the video, though, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.